So, are we good to go? Um, when I sit down, we're good to go. <laughs> go ahead, Alan. So, hello and welcome to the Untitled Review Show. We're back after an absence of... Fucking ages. There you go. Far too long. And this time, we are doing a show about the greatest death scenes in cinema history. And I'm joined by... Calm. And... Mike. <laughs> Sorry. I can't believe I messed up my own introduction. Sorry. Right. I need to stop doing that as well. Sorry. Yeah, I'll get you a coaster if you want. No, 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 I'm good. Well, Let's do it. So bourgeois. And I'm Alan, your erstwhile host for this one. And, you know, there, there will be spoilers in this. I think the nature of it kind of precludes that. So, I don't know, should we put a list up of the movies in the video description or something, just in case? Um, but in any case, I think we should crack on. So, I think the, the, the iconic one for me is probably always going to be Obi-Wan Kenobi in episode four. I mean... Have we said we're doing death scenes? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm, 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 I'm rusty. I'm rusty, sorry. Right, sorry. okay. Michael's not even here on work experience. <laughs> He's been doing this longer than the rest of us. I know, I'm sorry. Right, can I get the stuff? Anyway, as I was saying, I, Obi-Wan Kenobi is going to be one of the strangest, but you know, it's also quite iconic death scenes ever, because you know, he just disappears. I mean, that always freaked me out as a kid. I think I would have been less disturbed if there had actually been a body there. For some reason, the fact that he just vanishes, that's... And Darth Vader does that thing yeah, where he mushes it into oh, the guy. Oh, the swine. Yeah, no. it's, it's, it's but it's kind nasty. of something, it's a death you almost see coming because if you've seen the prequels, he's been kind of, as a character, been assassinated over a length yeah. of three films. So when it comes <laughs> to the end, you're just kind of like, let him die. I think the, be the, the best part in that scene, though, is the, the part where he looks at Luke and it's mm. like, well, he's got to see me being killed by Darth Vader mm -hmm. for him to know that this guy is actually manipulative because I think that's why he does that it. When he's fighting Darth Vader and then he sees Luke, he looks at him and he's like, he needs something to fight for. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give him it, you know, and then, and, then, and then he dies. I know. But there's also that thing as well where it's like you're watching it and you're like, Luke doesn't fucking freak out, despite the fact there's now someone in his voice uh, in his head going, "Run, Luke, run!" He's just kind of like, "All right, okay, is that is that me not? Go am I going mental? No, there's an old man in my head. That's fine." But that's it again. It's just the parallels with the sort of Lord of the Rings story, isn't it? Where like, uh, when Gandalf falls at Moria, mm. they all hear him shout, "Fly, you fools!" Mm. You know, um, run after. No, he doesn't say run. No, he says, "Run, you fools!" Oh, fly you fools! Oh, yeah, and and yeah, Lord of the Rings, yeah. fly you fools! Is the is the, is the line? That's what he actually said. Not in the not in the films. Because he it said he's holding on to the legs and he goes, it's "Run you fools!" And then he goes, "Oh, he falls." It's it's fly you fools, but it's yeah. it's fly you fools. But it might not be it might not be run you fools in the film, but it is fly you fools. It's run yeah, it's run you sure. It's run you fools in the film. Run you fools! And then he falls off and he's falling down. He's just fucking maybe maybe that's the ball run you fools actually. But it should be fly. Because none of them can fly. Hmm. Easy uh, jet, hello? Uh, this is why I've not done one of these names. One ticket to Moria, please. <laughs> Run, you fools! <laughs> no! Uh, Any baggage? <laughs> Just do, do you know the thing that bothers me about that scene though is the the uh, perspective problems with the lightsaber. Uh, where they're fighting and when the, the lightsabers like end on to the camera, uh, it just looks like it's <laughs> it's wee, it's wee thing like that. And also the fact that Although I have seen some fantastic edits of that that make it look far more energetic, it looks like a much more. Adi one, for example, looks much more of a of a of a, of a sort of a intense sword fight. Yeah. It is a little bit kind of you do get wee bits where you see Obi Wan and he's like, <laughs> you know, and I'm what I see him just kicking ass. But Alec Guinness, legend. Mm. Absolutely. We all we all went to talk oh, there and then seized ourselves all of a sudden. We'll but until we like deep breath. But uh, I suppose Robocop. Uh, yeah, Robocop. No, well we said this yeah. Robocops get like several great deaths. 
and it's I think that Murphy's where this is basically ruining the entire film for you probably. but these are films you should have seen they're all kind of I don't classics. go with that I've seen other review programs and stuff on YouTube where people say you should have seen this it's like <laughs> well no not really you should have seen Robocop if not why not well, yeah, no, you, know that, you know that you know that you turn away but anyway right. so what's your favourite death scene in Robocop then uh, well let's start immediately with Bobby He's not my favourite, but he's got one of the best character exits ever. Can, Can you, you fly, fly Bobby? Bobby. <laughs> 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 Fucking thrown at a windscreen. Uh, and, and, I mean, if he's not an the, the, dad, the dad from that 70s show is going fucking <laughs> mental. <laughs> I never, I never sits right with me. Clarence oh, Bodicar is pretty much cool. the, one of the best bad guys We've ever. We've talked about this before, the greatest entrance in a film ever. <laughs> Bitches, Bitches, leave! leave. <laughs> it's amazing. It's fucking brilliant. Oh. Yeah, so Murphy's original... Well, not... Is it death, though? No, yeah, he does yeah, die. Yeah, he does and die. then he kind of comes back. Eventually. <laughs> 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 you said that there as if, like, Jesus, <laughs> hurry up and die. I know, I know and it's, it's just it's my way of dealing with the pain, because that is, one of I think, one of the most traumatic death scenes I've I, ever seen in a film. It's brutal, really. it's absolutely it really brutal. Is, yeah. They hack it to bits for the TV, though, don't yeah. they? Uh, yeah, do you get, it just gets pushed over. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, oh, no, I'm going to Oh, my <laughs> back! Have you seen the, uh, the opening of the cartoon series, which also deals with this uh, oh, no. the, this scene in the most sanitised way ever? It's like, you know, you just see three no, guys come up with uh, <laughs> He wouldn't have much left to shake. But you know, it's like three guys come in with laser guns and then just cuts to um, Nancy Alscar from Lewis, is it? Fit, you know, kind of pulling up on the floor. He's still mostly intact in the cartoon version, so you know, it's. Well, you would. You would. You would. Think, you would think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I, remember, I, I remember the very first time I ever saw Robocop, mm. like, I was sitting watching it and, uh, like, my dad was kind of like very liberal, like, watch what you mm. want, mm. but I'm still going to keep an eye on certain things, and I always remember, like, that death scene I think the first time they told me to the thing is they told me to like look away uh, and then they thought it was over and then I turned back oh, and then it was so like annoyed. oh <laughs> <laughs> see, see that's funny that's the same situation because I remember I did watch with my dad and there was that bit and I was kind of like fuck and I looked around at my dad and he was like he <laughs> was just like that and I was just like thanks dad uh, <laughs> You gotta watch it, son. We, we, we talked as well. We, 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 we were talking as well about um, Dick Jones. Dick died Jones with the ridiculously elongated arms. <laughs> I know it's fucking brilliant. What was that when they used to use stop motion? Uh, Dude, man, it makes to go down. Was it actually stop motion? Yeah, you just throw a dummy out the window. No, it is actually stop stop motion. Uh, it's like because there's always that. His arms. It's like. His arm, it's like his elbow twice the size as they should be. And then his arms continue like It's that. like those wacky arm flailing tube men type things. <laughs> but you know, the giant inflatable things. But it's just that bit where you're like at the end, particularly when you watch it as a kid and it's like, uh, you know, you're fired and he's like, fuck, so what? And then Robocop's like, thank you. And then he's like, oh, fuck! It's, 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 Bam! Awesome. it's, awesome. it's awesome though, because you just see the... Uh, Directive 4 flashing in the bottom of the screen uh, and it just goes away. Oh. Don't forget as well, Ed 209's first kill, uh, which is oh, brilliant. That's one of the most brutal things I've oh. ever seen. And he's running around and everyone's like, get the fuck away! I remember he used brilliant. to see his tie slip fl- flapping up. Uh, when I was with me boy, I thought that was like his face. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Have you seen oh. the, the, the director's cuts like only got like a, a like maybe like a, I think a minute more in it, but it's like just brutal no, just shots. Yeah. That goes on. I think about 30 seconds of that extra oh, minute. That's the Dutch that for you. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Paul Verhoeven's just... That, that made me think of another death scene mm. uh, around about the same time, which was another film that... Uh, in fact, it was the only film that I can really think of where in the opening few minutes, my dad just went, nope, <laughs> and took it out. And I didn't see it until quite a few years later. And that was Hellraiser. Mm. And uh, Frank's yeah. death at the end. I mean, it's really I- iconic, you know? Yeah. Like, um, Jesus wept, you know, yeah. and he just explodes. It's pretty brutal. Really awesome. brutal. What was it? It's seen Terminator. Is it Bill Paxton that gets. <laughs> or is it the other one? Is it the guy that says, Wash day tomorrow? Oh, is, is it, it him that gets the fucking gorged, or is it Bill Paxton? Um, I can't remember. Can't be Bill Paxton. I doubt Bill Paxton. Bill Paxton gets killed, though. It doesn't that's a shame. Yeah, the Terminator just fucking breaks his neck or something. Sort of or punk in the start of it, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. There's two of them. I, cause it, I don't know if I get that wrong. No, I'm thinking of Robocop, I think. One of the guys, one of the, the punk guys that's like, trying to rape the women's like from Police Academy or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
That's really? fucking brilliant. Like the first well, ball. Like, no, no, no. Like, he stops. He stops that. Uh, he stops the the robbery first because that guy's got the sten with the massive barrel, oh, and he just comes in and goes, "Fuck you!" Wow. And then later on, he comes out, and that woman's getting attacked by the two guys, and he just shoots right for her uh, skirt. Well, I have to say as well, though, um, Clown's body gets death is pretty brilliant as well mm-hmm. the way you know Robocop's done for and then he just goes like that with the spike spike and just smash and there's like you, you, it's the splash of blood on Robocop's chest yeah it's just even like, that shootout in the cocaine factory before that's brilliant it's fucking that's brilliant as well doing all of that that's, that's so you know, uh, do you know what I work for <laughs> dick Jones fuck you <laughs> plate glass window he's a cop killer <laughs> you know uh, I right. really want to watch, do you know what I really want to watch Robocop Cause lastly, because we probably should move on to another yeah, film. Yeah, I think we're tight for time, so... Uh, the, Summarize quick. Okay, Robocop, the last one, the, uh, what's his name? The, the, one, the, the, the ginger one. Help me! Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, really that's horrible. It is good. Dang, I, I well, didn't find that was spot on. One thing <laughs> I have to say is, though, the third Robocop, that guy yeah. was shit. Oh. 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 Robert Buck. Is that it? Amy Shrub. So, move on to something else, I suppose. Right. Other deaths, we were talking about The Unforgiven, yeah. Oh, yeah. Gene Hackman's death, yeah. which again, ruining an absolutely fantastic film for so many people, but Gene Hackman's <laughs> death. <laughs> Star Vader is <laughs> Sorry, I'm anyway. in okay. uh, Two, please. Okay. Two Darth Vader heads. Hey, you just gave me a head. Hey. 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 Right. Hey. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, but that death scene, that, that whole scene is just the last ten minutes mm. where uh, Eastwood's character's hearing about what happened with Morgan Freeman, uh, and he just takes the bottle of whiskey away from the kid, mm. and he's just listening, and that's him back, yeah. you know, takes his school fee, all your money, you know, that that that's him just back to. Yeah. To be in the killer again. Yeah. And if anything, the school feels quite cool. It's just the same with any other ones, but because it's a single action pistol, there's that venom in killing people because you're having to oh, chamber yeah. a new shot, so it's kind of like that. You know, you're actually actively doing it. Yeah. It's not like a semi automatic where you're just pulling the trigger. You're actually having to crank the back. I'm way out of my depth here. <laughs> the school field top break revolver. Yeah. Is it actually used the revolver that or is it the rifle that is? Uh, no, he uses it after because he uses the um, shotgun. It's a oh, shotgun. Yeah. He doesn't yeah. use the Henry rifle because they've got the Henry rifle. That's mine. That's yours. Um they've got the Henry rifle, remember because he takes it in because he's speaking General. to Bochamp. Cheers. Oh. Cheers to the bun. Thanks. He's speaking to Bochamp and the Henry rifle sitting on the table takes a layer. He uses the shotgun, shoots the bartender, the second one's a misfire throws it away and then he pulls out the school field and yeah. takes everyone else out. Michael, if you don't want to play games with us, then it's fine. <laughs> Sorry, I, I just didn't expect what, you know, the amateur reenactment society to <laughs> <laughs> turn up. We, we, um, we meet me and Alan are Yankees through and through. <laughs> we, we meet wet, you know, we meet the last Wednesday of every month. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, so what, I mean, I think that the, the whole point of, of the end I'm forgiven when that happens is that you're, it's weird, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderfully mor- moralistically grey mm. film, mm. and but you still want Gene Hackman to get his comeuppance. Yeah, even definitely. Even, nice even though in a lot of ways, he is doing what he thinks is the best to keep yeah, the water, so yeah. when he finally does get it, and it's just... And he's, he's building a house as well, you know, which is always seen as something quite positive, you know. Like yeah, no, that's, that's his I, reason not to kill him, I'm building a house! <laughs> When uh, yeah, yeah. when when uh, money's uh, gun jams mm. as well, and it's just Gene Hackman's reaction. Misfire! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's something sort of like a game show about that. Throws at him, and then he does that kind of thing that people do in the movies, where they get knocked about two feet back by something that weighs oh. fuck up. Oh! <laughs> and then that gives him the opportunity to shoot everyone in the fucking building. No, it's absolutely fantastic. So what other what other? Okay. Well, uh, the one I was going to mention was uh, Brooks's death in the Shawshank Redemption, which oh, can yeah, yeah, again, that's it's just pretty you know, easily I would say the bleakest moment of that film, really. You know, just uh, because he has so red. Yeah, which if anyone's seen the most latest Mad Men will know that it's a particularly bleak way to go. But I'll oh, he's ruined. I've not spoiled it for anyone. <laughs> All he does is spoil films for me. I know that I've been a bit hypocritical. See Prometheus, right? Shut your <laughs> face. 
don't know why he had me until I've seen it. You're right though, it's fucking, uh, it's yeah, bleak. And then, you know, the carving in the top. Mm. Did Mor- Morgan Freeman came and stayed at the house after him, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's what they saw there. That's what it said that he puts in. He said Brooke was here and then Brooke hung, yeah. Brooke's hung himself. And then he writes, so was Red. It's because you're supposed to think that's what he's going to do. Because he's yeah. like, get busy living or get busy dying, you know. So you think that that's what he's going to do. So yeah, effectively he chooses to get busy living and stuff. Yeah. But there's a bit of op- there's a bit more he's a bit more opportunistic you know mm-hmm. and then brooks the red is you know what i mean red's kind of you there's a bit more about him that you realize he's got mm-hmm. a bit more of that kind of will to survive because he didn't really enjoy being inside he wasn't but I, don't know, I, I, I don't know if you, i don't know if you do have that because in the scene where red goes in to the probation reunion, uh, he basically tells them where they can stuff it because yeah, he's saying that yeah. i regret what i did but at the end of the day i'm here now and yeah. that's it so just stamp your book mm-hmm. because i've came here and Twelve months and so many times, he's almost resigned to his life, mm-hmm. and <clears throat> Brooks was resigned to his. Brooks wanted to stay there. I get what you're saying about Red, but I think that that's the dilemma for Red is that he either goes the way of Brooks, where he that's all he knows, and either goes back there, goes back to jail, or, or kills himself, mm-hmm. or he tries to build a new life for himself. And but I don't know if that's as much him. Um, thinking that he should stay there or more of a case of just realising that he'll never get out because they're not going to fucking let him. Possibly. Possibly. Yeah, I mean, it is interesting that they, they, only, they only let him out, you know, once he's resigned to the fact that he's going to be there forever. Yeah. There's a very un- interesting point, though, that the film makes about people who are institutionalised, you know, and sometimes yeah. there's, there's no alternative to that, you know, some mm. people have to be institutionalised, mm. but it's funny, I always remember when I was younger, I think I think it was maybe like a made-for-TV sort of cop movie, and there was a whole thing about someone committing a crime just to get mm. put back in jail, and I always remember it's uh, yeah. striking a note with me, you know, thinking what yeah. a horrible, a horrible way to be, where you, you cannot yeah. know how to function in, yeah. in society. So, so uh, the scene. Um, put me in it. Um, Oh yeah, Die Hard. Uh, it's almost like we've done this die before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Die Hard's my favourite character. Um, oh yeah. Do you prefer Die or Hard? Alan, <laughs> Alan Rickman. One of them. Alan Rickman's death is pretty good, and it's almost uh, the yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, spangly yeah, yeah, arms. And it looks great, though. That's yeah. the difference. Uh, it, it does look great. Just because it's Alan Rickman, and they actually dropped him off that building, and he was still alive. Without any net, I just thought I just bounced them off the ground. I'm in a great deal of pain. You know, just, <laughs> you know, you know just fall and just as he was about to hit the ground, he just shouted, Shakespeare! And then he was just absolutely fine. Like teleport! Like a, like a, like a, Shazam! You know, he, he says Shakespeare. Um, I think there's, there's a couple in Die Hard though as well, because you've got the one as well with... Uh, I think it's Ellis that, you know, when he's trying to negotiate oh. his way out of it and uh, Alan Rickman shoots him in the head and as I recall in unedited versions, I think it's Ellis where you actually do see the view of the, the dummy and you can see the, the space through his head. Yeah. Don't forget the kid that gets shot as well. Where, where was that? Was that a goat? In the flashback. Do you see the flashback? No, fuck. It's very safe. But you <laughs> visualise it, you visualise it and you think, he's the Fucking crazy! I've seen something. I don't know if the actual death itself is so memorable, but as well as you've got uh, Takagi near the start, or just for the, the line where it's, I'm afraid that Mr. Takagi won't be joining us for the rest of his <laughs> life. Talking of Die Hard, though, right? And this is really, this is a real big spoiler as well, right? As much as people absolutely slaughter Die Hard too, hmm. the big twist in the film. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. When the rookie gets killed, hmm. I yeah, remember that, watching that, that when I was younger, reason, and I was yeah. like. Jesus Christ! Yeah, that was, you know? I was like, I don't know where. Is that no? Because uh, it's like the guys are the, the, the uh, doubling, and they keep the reminiscing about uh, sort of different tours of duty mm-hmm. that they've had, and the kid says, "Oh God, I wish I was with you guys," and the sort of camera says, "So, so do I," because it means yeah, we're not in on it. So, yeah. and he just slits his throat. Yeah, just like and that. that. That's sorry. That's the reveal, you yeah. know. And mm-hmm. as much as people absolutely criticise that film, and it is very much a sort of a a sort of 1980s sequel where mm. they just try mm. to do a retread in a lot of ways there are some good things in that movie see my problem yeah. <laughs> my problem Cheers, with uh, Die Hard 2 is that Die Hard 3 as a concept makes more sense like mm. the fact that uh, Alan Rickman's brother would come back to avenge him the fact yeah. that you know John McClane would get involved in a second incident 
it's yeah, kind of a little bit mental, but the idea yeah. that they could come back yeah, for revenge, yeah. or even a fourth incident, and subsequently uh, a fifth incident. Oh, the fuck are you doing, no Bruce? Like no, like wise no longer uh, a wise cat guy. Live one, to your one, die. I mean, it's always like Shawshank Redemption. One that always sort of uh, stuck with me as well was was the death in the Green Mile. You know, uh, the fact that this character, yeah. who really is or should be, the Messiah. Hmm. Effectively, that's what he is, yeah. and the world is too dark for him. Yeah. It, it hurts too much, so he chooses death rather than 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 living oh, I was on. Say, does he? I suppose he does. He yeah, does because yeah. they, they. I mean, as much as Tom Hanks' character does say to him, "How far do you think you would get?" Yeah. But he he does no, say to him, he's "We'll, we'll break yeah, out." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, yeah. and it's a little bit sort of the reason I think he chooses that is because logically they could say right. Just keep, just show a, a, an authority figure something that's as high up as possible. The yeah, human powers that yeah. he's got, and and I think eventually you get a pardon, mm. you know. But it's, uh, I, I mean, that that's uh, I think very 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 sad, especially when you've got the parents gloating, uh, and it's not their fault, you know. They're yeah. victims of a terrible crime, but it's yeah. it's quite a sort of iconic death as well. And then the whole idea of Tom Hanks character having to live out his days, and he sees yeah. it not as a blessing. A yeah. punishment that he because I think it's he does not mention something about his watches his kids grow old and die as uh, well because he's like 125 yeah, or something like that yeah. because he, he's got a little bit of that power in him you know but no I thought that was an, an excellent death what about the horse from Never Ended Story a lot of people freak out about that maybe it was too cold as a child yeah no you're just too cold oh holy <laughs> cold you're not you're a warm happy guy <laughs> I can't even remember what happened. Drowned in the bog. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're, we're like the. Uh... <laughs> and the, the way the boy. Oh no! No, because it's the fucking swamp of despair or something, isn't it? And the wee boy's like, oh no! Think happy thoughts! And the fucking horse drowns. Why is the horse that sad? He's a fucking horse! <laughs> Have you seen the wild geese at all? People haven't seen No, I've heard about it. Uh, it's alright, I mean, we're spoiled. It's not a lot of people, it's not just spoiled. No, 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 it's, it's not so much that. You've got a lot of pain there. It's, it's not like I'm disappointed that you haven't seen it. It's like the Mighty Ducks. Is, was, there, was there a death in that? Is, it, is that the. Is that no. the. Geese <laughs> ducks. Oh, no, I see what you mean. I'm just thinking, you know, like, does, does Emilio Estevez cut someone with a skin? Oh. I think his face died at some point. <laughs> Well, it, it actually is one because he he's in a, he does a guest spot in one episode two and a half men and he dies like within the first five minutes. Well, I will tell you something. Another one, Emilio Estevez, where it was it was like advertised he was one of the stars of the first Mission Impossible film. That's yeah. a good point. Was, yeah, uh, and yeah, people were like that, and he yeah. dies in the first few minutes. Yeah, the same, you know. And, and well, see the guy in the left in the, yeah, in the left. Yeah. Is he? That's him. Yeah. I mean, see if you actually look at that. I mean, I think that the, the entire team. Mm. Are full of people that are sort of quite well known ish mm. and they mm. all get wiped out. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that was sort of trying to surprise you, but I don't think it is because I mean, the people not talk about is it executive decision where Steve well, Seagal dies say, like yeah. early on yeah. and they were yeah, saying he was like one of the top films in that film. Yeah, so. and that's the same degree. Remember that episode of South Park when George Clooney wrote in and said, I'd love to play a character, and they got him to play Sparky in the game. Oh, yeah. He just had to bark. <laughs> For the well, whole it's the same as uh, in The Simpsons really? where they got Elizabeth Taylor to do Maggie sucking her dummy. <laughs> <laughs> that, that happened, that is the thing that was really? happening. Yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. Oh. Is that not just basically pissing all over <laughs> something? I know. We can yeah. dance, dance, monkey, dance. But they got George Clooney back for the movie and he played the doctor that tries to save Kerry and accidentally replaces his heart with a big no. potato. Yeah, it's Seriously. George Clooney. George Clooney's in oh, the same Clooney, part of the movie. Right, right, right. For some reason, I was thinking you were saying George Lucas. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah, so, that, that. Can we I have more plays? I think he did see George Lucas. Speaking of which, oh, you hear that fucking Red Tails is getting re released yeah. out here. Was Bullshit. Another death. One of the worst films um, ever. Don't see Red Tails. Don't see it. It's rubbish. But it's finally getting a release out here, even though it came out in America fucking ages ago. Hmm. It's rubbish. The death of cinema. It's another death. <laughs> it's, it's horrible. It's the death of cinema. <laughs> why are you playing that, George? Um, but I think as well, I don't know, other. other other great death scenes when we were talking about like uh like Arnie's death scene and Yeah, Terminator Two. But when you know, it's cheesy as all hell, uh, but, I love, the I, but it's great yeah. though, but but I think as well people talk about that was great mm. about another major spoiler, Reese's death in mm. the Terminators, you don't see it. 
Yeah. That's a good point. He just yeah. she rolls yeah. him over and he's dead. Yeah. You know, and I, and I think that watching the first Terminator film now, mm. it is a better film than the second one. Mm. I mean, the the second one is a classic action film and mm. it's, it's a really great it's action a movie. Kind of movie. It's a different type of movie. Maybe it's not not fair to compare yeah. them, but I think there's a grittiness and realism. Yeah. And I think there's so many clever things going on in the first Terminator film. But yeah, I, I think, think see, it's a, think it's a better it, movie. I think that the difference between them is because the, now I get the grittiness, but the grittiness is kind of part of the resistance thing because the whole idea is Kyle Reese versus the machine. Mm. So the machines are superior to Kyle Reese, right? But in the second one, although the T1000 is superior to the T100 or whatever fuck model yeah, it is yeah. in the Terminator Two, um, there's a higher level of technology and I don't think it's quite the same. You get almost a flavour of what it's like to be in the resistance in the first movie because mm-hmm. Kyle Reese is having to make those fucking rubbish pipe bombs and stuff like that. <laughs> Whereas in the second film, it's Arnie just, you know, getting shot oh, a million that's, times that's and he doesn't true. die, you know. And then, There's not that same level there. You know the T-1000 can get the Terminator shape. And then Terminator Salvation was the death of the franchise. <laughs> what uh, the fuck were you playing at? Yeah, I know. I know. Oh, oh, it's what? a different timeline. It's a different timeline. Shut up, mate, G. He's a shit director. You fucking did Charlie okay, Angels. Right, on Why did you stay on topic? Stay on topic. We're all right. We're okay. We're good. We're good. If you ever want to fight me, too, I'll take you. <laughs> okay. Here's one that we've. I don't know really if we should talk about the alien thing. If we're going to talk about alien at some point. Mm. Let's yeah. Talk let's about, not talk. Right, about. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. What else then? Because uh, I actually had a few films in my head there mm. when we cut. Uh, I can't remember. What about it. the death of Black Dynamite's brother? <laughs> Which is the entire <laughs> genesis of Black Dynamite. That's, that's quite ironic. That's a good day. <laughs> I introduced uh, Michael to this film recently uh, and I, he's been laughing I, ever since. I, I need to own it. I need to own it. It's is that here on DVD? One of the funniest films I've ever seen. it came out. Okay, one, yeah. one of the funniest films I've ever seen. But we, maybe we could do a short video about it at some yeah. point because it really is. Phenomenal. Anaconda malt liquor! I'm, so, I'm, so I'm so glad Callum introduced me to it because uh, it's, it's absolutely Makes me wish I was black yeah. and huge. <laughs> like oh, six feet two. Well, all of them. Yeah, 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 okay, okay, okay come on! The panda into stereotypes once again. Can you think of any other death scenes that you'd, you'd like to talk about? Uh, well, you said Shane. Oh, that's a good point. The, the, the problem is that. <laughs> Yeah, you didn't know he was there. No, it was just it's a grizzly episode of East Enders. Fuck the bitch. I mean, the problem with talking about Shane is just the, it, does he die or does he not die? I mean, there is a lot of debate about that. That you know, that is what makes it such a dark film that he does die at the end. But you know, a lot of people say that he don't. He See, I rewatched it the other. <laughs> I rewatched yeah, it the other day because one of my colleagues uh, says that Shane is one of the best westerns ever, I and, seen and, it and, and it is good. And, and I never really held it much esteem, and I went back and watched it recently. I thought it is a good film. It's well put together. Even just the bit, the start, the interaction, and the dialogue is good for a film of its time. A lot better than the dialogue. And, and in a western, though, if you're going to go out. You might as well go out like the Wild Bunch. Well, that's what I was going to say, because yeah. I remember just as we were talking about Shane that you were saying the Wild Bunch as well, which, you know, obviously full of, full of death. Full of death. I could get, give him hell, Pike, is just <laughs> one of the best <laughs> moments in cinema history, because that, to me, is oh. like a group of friends. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah! Oh, I think, in a way, And they like, take down some amount of the Mexican army, right? Oh, some amount. Was Half the, it, I think. Well, was it 69 that the Wild Bunch came out? Cause right about there, I Because I was just thinking, is it is it like a sort of metaphorical death of the Western as a genre? Well, it's partially that, but I think they said Unforgiven was the confirmed that was death, the, wasn't That was the nail on the coffin, the coffin. because mm-hmm. you spend all of Unforgiven wanting Clint Eastwood to be the character, the man with no uh, name, the, 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 yeah. the, the avenging angel of Pale Rider, whatever. Mm-hmm. You want him to be this iconic Western mm-hmm. character, and then when he finally becomes him, well, your money, the you killer of women and children. You don't want yeah. to be him yeah. because yeah. you realise that, well, all that was Hollywood, whereas here's a guy that is yeah. like, you know. And I love it when he's in the horse at the end and he's like, any of you touch any of these whores, yeah. and I'll come <laughs> back. Cut up no <laughs> whore, I'll come back and I'll burn up your friends and <laughs> your family. And it was like, all right, Clint, sorry. It's, it, unforgiven, it's though, is um, Eastwood's best film as a director. You know, I was, we were just being. Grand Dreamers, right? Recently, and uh, lately, I've. 
I, I've come to prefer the outlaw Josie Wales. I think right. it's just an easier film. Oh yeah, we, we talked about this the other night. Yeah. It was Paul, so don't we? Yeah. Um, I know. Um, so, have we have we covered all the deaths? <laughs> the only thing the I would deaths. say, where you were talking about westerns, there's a brilliant death in in all of the spaghetti westerns, all of Leone's films. I mean, yeah. just look at you know, shoot for the heart. You know when he's wearing the plate yeah, and he's shoot. True. That's brilliant. Good, the bad, and the ugly. He's got some great, particularly the end shoot. And love then of course, few dollars more. Yeah, with yeah, the, the music box. Because that, yeah. that that scene at the very end of it, where you know Eastwood comes out with the second watch. Oh, yeah. that that is absolutely genius. Brings it down. Just, now we start. Yeah. Now we start, and then he's got the gun, but it's, it's fucking brilliant. Like, you see Cheers, the, Sergio. Except he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> the studio has killed him. The studio has killed him with the. Once upon could, a time. Anyone, could anyone get away with so many long standing close ups of, of, of people Probably just looking at each other? Was that maybe Tarantino, I think, might manage it? Just about. Before we finish, once upon a time in America, I slipped. That's, Remember? That's, yeah. yeah right. He dies. Right. I'm, I'm actually going to ask you not to ruin this one for me. Have you not oh, seen it? No, no, no. I have seen, uh, I have seen it. It was one of the ones again that I watched with my dad oh, right. when I was younger, but I went to Go. watch it recently and I've been on it's a long film. kick, so. Mm. It's brilliant. Mm. Uh, long film, but you know, it's, it's, it's fucking brilliant. Mm. Watch it. So We need to round up. Yeah, I think we should. So, yes, these have been the greatest deaths. And, oh, uh, not great. Oh, it's a great. The, the, <laughs> not the, all of them. The deaths that we could think of yeah. within half an hour. It's such, <laughs> it's such a short notice. <laughs> Maybe we'll do a live stream one day. I was talking about that. Someone requested that. Yeah, no, it's okay. Yeah, I've got a bit of a runny nose, sorry. On that bombshell. <laughs> so we'll Maybe it's the death, so it's going to be like a big bit of blood and then my head will just be like fucking scanner. Actually, I know what we should end it on. Greatest death ever. The guy that blows up because he becomes too fat at the end of Big Trouble in Little China. Oh yeah. That, that is... I thought, I thought you were going to say like we should, we should uh, you know run out with guns and hands like at the end of uh, Bridge Casting and Sundance Kid. <laughs> That's got, remember Live and Let Die as well. He almost had an inflated ego <laughs> himself when he takes a pull up. Oh, big Roger, eh? Big Roger. Uh, right, yeah. we'll be back soon. Oh, my. See you for later, more, troops. For more fun. Bye. Peace out. Motherfuckers, come on. 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 I got seven Mac 11s, about eight, 38, nine, nine, ten Mac 10s. The shit's never end. You can't touch my riches. Even if you had MC Hammer and them 357 bitches. Biggie Falls.